Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, actually a rainy San Diego, who knew? And uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by Shayla Boyd-Gill, who is over in Maryland on the other side of the country. How are you doing, Shayla? I'm doing great. And we actually have a little bit of sun today, so this is great. Ah, that's, so that's where our sun went. <laughs> As it came over here, <laughs> it did. It did, and um, and Shayla, you know, teaches uh, six figure women entrepreneurs and, and and many other things. And what we want to talk about today is scale in less time with fewer clients. Ooh. Who wouldn't want to be able to do that? Because let's face it, we're always chasing more and more and more. And we think that adding more clients will scale our business faster. So, um, so Shayla, tell me, how can uh, how can you uh, put forward a counterintuitive argument? Oh, yeah, I love that it's a counterintuitive argument because everyone thinks the more I do, the more I'll get paid, um, the easier it will be. And that's the exact opposite. If we have to continue to have more and more clients, that's more work for you to do, which means more of your time is being occupied. My belief is you can do the same, you can have the same scaling goal, the money goal, you can do it with fewer clients, but we do that through high ticket programs, being able to use high ticket offers and boldly request what we really want and not have to serve as many people. It's interesting because uh, let's say the mantra is always obviously new business, new business, new clients, new logos, and we get very fixated on that. And yet at the same time, everybody knows that it's, it's harder and more expensive to win a new client than it is to nurture and grow and upsell your existing clients. But we always seem to have a bias towards the new business. It, it feels easier for a lot of people, but in actuality, you spend more time. But if you have your own clients that are having an amazing experience with you, you're able to retain those clients. And they appreciate you more if you're saying, look, let's look at our next step. What else can we do to grow together? They're more likely to say yes than the person that you have to nurture longer that doesn't know who you are. Yeah. And sometimes I think sometimes I think uh, companies and salespeople is, uh, are, are once they've landed the client, sometimes they're kind of nervous to actually go to the next step. They're like, OK, I've got the client. They seem to be happy. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going wrong. Therefore, I'll just I'll just leave it be. I'll hit, you know put bubble wrap around it and just wait for the renewal. But here's the deal, John. If you really get to know your client and you really nurture them the right way, it'll be easy to have that conversation. It's just another invitation. So what when you have to take out of it is I got to sell that next thing. Instead, I'm inviting you to continue to have a more amazing experience. And if you've done your job of serving them properly it's a natural conversation that will be had. They'll probably bring it up themselves. You know, absolutely. And I think then what that puts the onus on, on the entrepreneur or the salesperson of the company, as you say, is to really get to know and nurture the relationship with the, with the client. And that requires, well, I mean, it requires really understanding their business. I think that's the, that's the key. I think a client will have a conversation with you if, if they feel that you understand them. Yeah. You know, don't we all want to be known? <laughs> don't we all want to yeah. feel like we're heard? There's so much noise out here in on social media. You want to feel like someone knows you and values what you do in the world. So why not, if I'm investing heavily with you, I need you to know me. <laughs> I need you to make sure you have my back. You're 100% with me, but you, you want to have that experience and create it for your clients, but you also want to create it for the right people. So that's where you get into making sure you have highly qualified, high quality clients. Those are the people that really want to stick around. Yeah, no, absolutely. I just want to come back to a point you raised there that I think is a very critical one for people is, is that is that when people are spending money with you, you know, they want to get to know you, they want to understand your organization. I mean, let's face it, they they probably want to grow with you. They just don't know you that well yet. So right. it's up to you to, to build that relationship. But the other thing you mentioned there is, and I think coming, it was starting before the pandemic, but definitely since, you know, with the pandemic, it's got even more is, I think there's a real hunger for people to know and trust each other, especially as you said, there's so much noise, garbage yes. and conflict out there that they want to find good people to work with. Yeah, and, and it's okay to be a good person. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes people associate big money with a big attitude, right? It's like, oh, if you make a lot of money, they're not accessible. I'm the coach. You can't get next to me. No one wants to hear that anymore. It's like, no, I want you. (laughs) We need to fix this situation. So you're absolutely right, John. People want to make connections. They've spent how many months just staring at their computers on Zoom and looking at everything going on on social media? They want to have a real human connect. Yeah, I'm, I I, t- I totally agree with that. And and to your point, yeah, you can be a good person. Yeah, it's a, there's a message for everybody. You can be a good person. Don't let social yes. media tell you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, it's uh, it also means then that you have to have a different way, as you said, a way of working internally, like where you really do put resources around existing customers and nurturing them and building relationships with them and that require and that sometimes maybe require you splitting even your sales team between new business people and you know hunters farmers etc yeah so here's the key if we can make more money with fewer clients we probably don't need a sales team that's as large number one Mm. and the person that sold them can probably be the one that will continue to nurture them you will more than likely have someone that may be initially seeking the people or helping to market and attract leads, but you might find that you have time to do that too, depending on how you're really structured. Say if you had a program that was $100,000 per person, you can absolutely get your own leads and close your own deals because more than likely, I bet you, you don't have a thousand people in your program. You may just have 10 people in your program and you're not working as hard. Yeah, no, I think that I think that's a good point. And, and I think sometimes that uh, when people start businesses or get into business, uh, they don't have a clear idea of where they're going or what they want to do. They just kind of forge forward. And I think even established companies, oftentimes there's its own momentum and nobody sort of stops to question it and to say, are we are we putting the resources in the right place? And what's our goal here? I think yeah. that's the thing is sometimes what's our goal? It's the goal is super important. And I love that you said the resources, like if you're putting the resources in, we need to hire all of these people. It's great that you want to give back and hire. It's fine. But are we hiring the right people for the right thing? You may not need a huge team. If your business is a more boutique model and you're watching what the mega companies are doing, you're following the wrong model. You need to follow a model that fits your business and you'll save money, cut down on those expenses some so that you actually can be profitable. There are a lot of people out here, John, that are making seven figures in business, but you don't have seven figures in the bank, right? Your expenses are chewing away at it. You're probably under because you're not doing it in a smart manner. So you have to be very strategic about that in your resources. Yeah, and I'm glad you raised that point as well about people hiring because it, it is one of those other things that's kind of a conventional wisdom. It's it's the minute a company grows, it's like, oh, let's hire more people. Right. And, and my experience has always been that when people get into that mode, you just hire people for tasks. You don't look at whether it's a good task or whether the process is good or whatever. You just throw people at it and throwing people at it is never a good solution. Never. <laughs> I mean, we, we've seen the downfall of that. More than likely, those people aren't going to stick because that's not their true genius zone. That's not the true thing they could do. And you probably hadn't documented your processes at that point. So you're really wasting money because now you have to not only document, but attempt to train on the thing that's in your head at the same time it becomes a total mess. Yeah, yeah. I had an I had an experience way back in the dot com days where I got uh, I got uh, headhunted by a recruiter to go to a, a dot com, and I went and met with the executive team and the CEO and the executives, and then they said meet with each one individually and we'll talk about the job, and um, you know it was executive level job. So I met with all of them, and then I came back to the CEO, and she said. Um, well, what do you think? And I said, well, I'll tell you the truth, to be honest. I think you've created you've created a job um, that contains all the things that everybody on the executive team doesn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Or do mm-hmm. And I said, and that's just set up for failure because yeah. there's, I said, you'd be better off looking at what everybody's doing in the processes. Didn't, um, didn't please the recruiter, my <laughs> answer. <laughs> I'm sure, but, but you know, you, you live through truth and honesty though, right? Yeah. So that was an integral response. Whereas another person may have said, okay, I'll figure it out. You understood. It's not going to look the way that they're selling this. This thing is going to be a, a mess. Yeah. 
And the good thing is they pulled the job and they actually went back and looked at their own processes. And to, 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 but to this day, I regret as I should have sent them. A, I should have sent them an invoice for consulting. <laughs> you, were, you were consulting. Absolutely. You're like, fix it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like I said, I mean, it's part of that. I think I think it's also, um, Shayla, the thing is that people want people avoid looking at their internal processes and avoid looking at efficiency and all of that, because that all seems kind of really boring but your point is when you get that part right you can scale with fewer people yeah when you get that part right it's it's so easy to scale like you said a very efficient team but even scaling in the selling process you know mm -hmm. once you get that part right once you are willing to go back look at your process does it work the way that you really desire it to work are you attracting the clients you really want to attract or are you just selling just to hit a goal just to mark a number off to say we did it You'll clean your business up if you take the time to really look at what's going on behind the scenes and honor the fact that you might need to shake some things up a little differently. Yeah, and I love the thing that you talk about as well is um, spending less time on sales calls and more time on making a difference. And, yes. And I think, that's, I think that's a really key concept for people uh, is that that is, I mean, that's the job of a salesperson is making a difference. It is. I mean, how many times have you received a call at night in the middle of dinner? Someone's like, hey, this is Bob and I want to sell you an X, Y, Z. Bob could care less about you. Mm -hmm. But if you've been on a call with someone who has requested a discovery call or has requested that you sell to them, and by the end, they feel like that was the best 30 minutes that I spent, even before they even start a program or whatever it is that you're offering, they already feel like it's a win. You're making an impact. Another impactful thing may be that you, they've said yes, and you've sent them a welcome, something, something to say thank you. It, they don't have to wait one month until their program starts. They have something already to let them know. Again, it was a great decision. So what I love to do with my clients, we go through what we call seven Lux touch points. And part of that is the gifting, the experience, um, something that feels exclusive. All of these things matter. When you look at like luxury sales, Follow the pattern that you see with luxury sales. When you go into mm -hmm. a boutique, what is that pattern? What is the experience? You can model that experience in your business too. Yeah, I love that. That's a, that's. I think that's a great analogy. Is is thinking of how you know if you walk into if you walk into a boutique on Rodeo Drive, right? You know how do they how how do they treat how do they react and what do they do? Right. And if you buy something, like how do they? Do you know, like they they put it in the bags, they walk around from behind the counter and right. hand it to you. Right? Hand it to you. Of, yeah. I, did I they throw that. it in the bag or did they actually fold it with some paper and place it in there nicely? Does it feel like the bag has a bow on it? Did the box come wrapped with something? How can you make your experience feel like that? Yeah. And the other thing is, were they, were they, was all their attention fixed on you and were they attending to you from the moment of that till you actually exited the store or were yes. they hurrying up and giving it to you because they're looking at somebody else? That's big. Did it feel VIP or not? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that, that you say that this is something that you can introduce in your business. If you think about, I, I think that's the thing is if you think about your customers a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you want to think about them differently. They're not just another number. People always say, I don't want to feel like another number. There's something special. There's someone special. And again, they will rave about you. They're going to tell other people about you if you make them feel special. If you make them feel like a number, you can expect it when they're done, they're saying, thank God, let me move on to the next thing or the competition because this was not what I wanted. Yeah, I mean, it's like that old adage, isn't it? You know, the people don't remember what you say, but they remember how you, how you made them feel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think I think that's fantastic as well. And I think the other part here is, and I think you alluded to this at the beginning, though, a lot of this is all about choosing the right customers. And I think that's another part that it's amazing. Everybody will tell you that they have their a well-defined target customer. But when you really dig into it, you'll find that it's not that well-defined and you they go outside it all the time. And then that leads to its own issues because you're trying to fit square pegs into round holes. Oh, honoring your truth. Okay. The truth in what you really want, the truth in what you really can deal with is super important, John. So what we will find is I have to teach my clients a lot of time to release what's no longer working for them. So that releasing always, there's a fear there of, I'm going to leave someone behind. I'm going to leave some money behind. I'm going to leave an opportunity behind. But if that came with a headache, 
are you really leaving something bad behind? It's like, no, you're getting rid of it. You're releasing it so you can attract more of what you really desire. And if you make space for what you desire and define that properly, those people you want to work with can see you. They can find you easily. But if you're murking, murking the water and saying, I help every woman, <laughs> I help every man, then you're going to attract everyone. You're going to be on thousands of sales calls because you have the wrong people coming into your funnel. Yeah, yeah. And your sales are going to go down, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> or you get, <laughs> you're going to get refund requests. Attrition is going to be a mess. It's, it's, ugh. I don't like yeah, to deal with it. <laughs> no, no, ab- absolutely. I love that idea about honoring your truth because that takes a little bit of discipline. And also you mentioned about maybe you've got to leave things or, or people behind. And, and what I would say is when people have either or people or things that they're clinging on to that aren't, that aren't serving them, I always have to ask what the individual is like, what purpose is this serving you? Because it's because mm-hmm. ser- you're using it for some purpose, right? It's and a crutch. It's probably it's a crutch and it may not be a good one and it may not be a one that makes you feel positive or whatever, but for some reason it's fulfilling, it's filling a need and you need to figure out that need and get rid of it. Yeah, you do. Here's one thing I love to teach people too, is three C's. There are three things that I always ask my, my clients to do. Number one, you want to be congruent. So being congruent in what's in your head, what's coming out of your mouth, they need to be the same. If they're like this, <laughs> That's where the problem is. Number two, are you being, are you committed? You say you want something. Are you actually doing what you need to do so that you can get it? Commitment is, you know, where people fall off. They they start and then they stop. They start, life happens, start. And that's when people go back to what they feel is the easier sell or the persons that they can get. They they really don't want to work with. The number uh, three is consistency. Can you be consistent? That, you know, you could be committed and not consistent. <laughs> you could be congruent in what you say and what you think and still not be consistent. Being consistent is that show up piece. Are you willing to continue to show up in your truth each and every time? Are you consistently attracting the people you really want? And when you get on the phone with them, are you consistently making sure it's the right fit client and giving yourself permission to not make an offer? to not invite the people that you don't want to work with. You have to, again, what's your checklist? How are you making sure that you're in alignment with what you say you want and growing the way you desire to grow? You can't scale a messy business. It won't work. No, no, you can't. Uh, you absolutely can't. And and I love those uh, congruent, committed and consistent. And and you're correct. The consistent part is the one that really, really undermines in the end, because if you start off with a great experience and and then sometimes it's not so great and then it's OK again or whatever. I mean, it right. just leaves you not feeling good. But cons- and consistency can be as simple as a just simple communication. Just simply following up, as you said, simply reaching out, doing whatever, taking if if you've if you've handed somebody off to support to right. fix something, maybe following up later and saying, hope did I, I I checked in with support, looks like everything is good. That kind of consistency is just absolutely like worth it. And people worse. love that little touch. It's 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 an it's just an extra touch that took less than a minute. Yeah, absolutely. And and the other one, because you're the one that always drives me mad is like if you if you have an issue and they say, oh, well, we'll, we'll yeah, thank you. We'll update you in like two hours and you never right. hear anything till the next right. day. <laughs> okay, yeah. And even even if that update in, in two hours time is to say we still haven't resolved it, we're working on it, you know, hang in there. I'm good with that. I'm not good with you saying you're going to follow up with me in two hours and then following up with me the next day. Silence can definitely cause you to lose money. Mm-hmm. And, and lose part- stress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I love that idea about congruent. I wonder um, for listeners and, and viewers here, um, it'd be great to think about when are there times when what's in your head and what's coming out your mouth are completely different or at odds with each other? Right. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely, I, I love for people to think about this and the newer entrepreneur or business owner may think about this when they say they make a goal, for example, of what they want their revenue goal to be this year. So say, you know, most people say, I want $100,000. Okay, great. You want $100,000. That's what you're thinking. But out of your mouth, I don't know if I can make 100,000 this year. Oh, it's so hard. I don't No one's going to pay me that much money this year. I don't know if my program's good enough. This can't work. 
what we feed and fuel the universe with is what we get delivered or served back to us, right? So if you're serving up confusion, the universe doesn't know what to offer you. Maybe you're not ready for $100,000 because you're saying, I don't believe it. I don't have faith that this is going to happen. I don't believe in myself that I can make this happen. So now it's voided. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's such a that's such a powerful point uh, because I think so, uh, and it's, and it's a I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's a relatively simple because simple and easy don't equate. Uh, right. But it's a relatively simple thing to address if you start to take notice of are your thoughts and your words are your your goals your desires or whatever are they in conflict. Yeah, if they're in, and if they're in con- conflict, you can actually take authority and say, okay, I'm catching myself now. I, I hear what I'm saying. Let me change that. So maybe if, it, if you're saying, I'm not sure that I can make this money this year, it may be, I may need some support to be able to reach that goal. Yeah. You know, I want $100,000. I need support to be able to reach that goal. This is a new experience for me, but I'm willing to do the work so that I can have the outcome I really desire. So again, the, what's the willingness that you have in that versus letting the fear lead? You got to drive this machine a little bit differently. Yeah, no, that, I, I love that. That's a great point is, um, is turning it around and just saying, okay, if, if I'm worried about this, well, then obviously there are things I need to do. So let's get proactive. Let's get action oriented. Let's figure out how to do it rather than just kind of sit there going. You know, and stew in you know. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, listen, this has been fantastic, uh, Shayla. This has been so good. Um, so many great insights here for everybody. All of Shayla's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. So I really love teaching women entrepreneurs, especially how to be able to scale their business, as we said, with fewer clients and in less time. And we do this through a high ticket business method. It could be private coaching. It could be group coaching. But what I like you to know, your knowledge can take you a long way if you package it properly. Yeah, that's fantastic. Listen, thanks so much again. As I said, some fantastic insights and takeaways. I took some notes myself here. Uh, My name is John Golden. I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.